Greetings. In the last uh, lecture, I talked uh, about what are often called the Vietnam War cases, uh, Tinker versus Des Moines, Cohen versus California, and U.S. versus O'Brien. Uh, remember, in those cases, the Supreme Court uh, expanded uh, the definition of speech to nonverbal communication or freedom of expression. Uh, remember that Mary Tinker's armband was protected. Uh, Cohen's uh, provocative jacket was protected, but Mr. O'Brien's burning of a draft card was not protected because the court determined that that was the destruction of government property. Uh, this uh, lecture will probably be a little bit shorter than most others because uh, I want to just talk about one Supreme Court case, Texas versus Johnson. Uh, and the reason that I'm going to focus on only one case in this example uh, is this is the only example in, in my lifetime where the reaction to the case was uh, so overwhelming that Congress on five occasions attempted to change the Constitution uh, and add a constitutional amendment. So uh, in the case of Texas versus Johnson, uh, Gregory Lee Johnson is uh, the leader of a communist group. They call themselves the Revolutionary Communist Youth Brigade. Uh, Mr. Johnson gave a very long speech uh, in Dallas, Texas. The Republican convention was going on in 1984 in Dallas. Uh, and this was Gregory Lee Johnson's uh, uh, effort to denounce Ronald Reagan, uh, most notably his foreign policy in Latin America. So there was a significant speech. Uh, people listening to the speech understood that uh, uh, Mr. Johnson and his group were opposed to Ronald Reagan's foreign policy. The speech itself was not the problem. Uh, the problem was when the speech was over, Mr. Johnson and his group uh, engaged in action. Uh, the group uh, chanted America, the red, white, and blue, we spit on you. They then spat on the flag and they lit it on fire. Uh, as I mentioned at the end of the last lecture, uh, 48 states, including Texas, had laws banning the physical desecration of the flag. Uh, Texas, in many states, referred to the flag as a venerated symbol or venerated object. And in essence, what the states claimed uh, was that uh, the flag was uh, a special and unique object and it deserved unique protection. Uh, at the time, there was also a federal law which banned the physical desecration of the flag. So uh, uh, the state of Texas, in this case, the Dallas police uh, arrested uh, Mr. Johnson and he was uh, convicted. Uh, now, Mr. Johnson made the claim in his attorneys uh, that in this particular case, uh, it was not the burning of the flag uh, that was the issue. After all, uh, flags are burn, burned uh, routinely. Uh, it's the only honorable way to get rid of a soiled or, or old or, or tattered flag is to, uh, is to burn it. Uh, my son went through a Cub Scouting uh, episode, the highest award in Cub Scouting I don't know if it still is, but when my son was young was uh, the Arrow of Light ceremony. And part of that ceremony uh, was the burning uh, of, of the flag. Uh, and I forgot what it stood for. I think the red was for the blood of uh, our uh, of patriots who, who died to protect our freedom. And the whites were the, like the spirit to descend into heaven. I, I, I forgot exactly. But the point is, is what Mr. Johnson was arguing is that it's not the burning of the flag. In this case, the government merely prosecuted him because they find his ideas and the expression of it, his ideas offensive and disagreeable. So the case uh, took quite some time. This speech took place in 1984. And as you can see by your notes, this case did not arrive before the Supreme Court uh, until 1989. The Supreme Court was highly divided. It was a five to four Supreme Court decision. Uh, and in this case, the Supreme Court ruled that flag burning was 
constitutionally protected by the First Amendment. The Supreme Court decision overturned the laws of all 48 of those states that had banned flag burning. It also overturned the federal law, which had uh, protected the flag against desecration. Uh, the Supreme Court had two very, very, very well-written opinions in this case. The majority opinion, and I'm just going to pick excerpts out. Uh, I don't have them written down, so this probably will not be that articulate. But Justice Brennan said uh, something like the following. If there's a bedrock principle underlying the First Amendment, it is that the government may not prohibit the expression of an idea simply because society finds the idea itself offensive or disagreeable. Yes, our flag is an important symbol, but so too are the flags of all 50 of our states. The presidential seal and our court should not decide which symbol deserves unique protection because we then would be making a value judgment. Our decision will strengthen rather than harm the symbolism of the flag because it is a reaffirmation of the freedom and inclusiveness that our flag represents. The way to preserve the flag's special role is not to punish those who feel differently about these matters. It is to persuade them that they are wrong. Now, while I think that that's an excellent, uh, an excellent statement by Justice Brennan, uh, the Chief Justice, Mr. Rehnquist, who wrote a very powerful dissent, is just as eloquent. Uh, once again, uh, these are paraphrases and not exact quotes, but fairly close. Uh, Chief Justice Rehnquist says, In World War II at Iwo Jima, an island belonging to Japan, 6,000 American Marines lost their lives fighting their way to the top of Mount Suribachi to plant the American flag. There must be strong grounds at overturning laws aimed at protecting our flag against desecration, and we do not believe the symbolic speech argument is very convincing. Far from a case of one picture being worth a thousand words, flag burning is the equivalent of an inarticulate grunter roar that is most likely to be indulged in not to express any particular idea, but merely to antagonize others. The flag burner in this case had a full panoply of other symbols and every conceivable form of verbal expression to say what he wanted to say. He did not have to resort to this inarticulate, vicious act against a symbol uniquely sacred to Americans. Uh, once again, I think uh, both sides are very eloquent. I think both sides uh, are very well spoken. Uh, personally, uh, I would have uh, voted with Justice Brennan. Uh, I would have uh, voted uh, uh, to extend constitutional uh, protection uh, in this particular case. I would have ruled that flag burning is constitutionally protected symbolic speech. But I understand the arguments on the other, th other side, and about 75% of Americans disagreed with me. Uh, and there was tremendous pressure put on the U.S. Congress to add a constitutional amendment uh, that would protect the flag from being desecrated or burned. <clears throat> now go back to when I talked about constitutional amendments earlier in this course. I told you that there is a two-pronged standard that two-thirds majorities of both houses of the Congress are needed and three-quarters of the states are needed. Over the next, I believe, seven years, there were five attempts to add a constitutional amendment. On all five occasions, more than two-thirds of the House of Representatives voted in favor of this constitutional amendment. So that means that the place where this amendment died was in the U.S. Senate. There are a hundred senators, so the magic number to pass the constitutional amendment was 67 votes. And in the closest of those five votes, the vote was 66 to 34. 
In other words, the proposed constitutional amendment failed by one single solitary vote. Now, if there had been a 67th vote, and there wasn't, there were only 66, but if this amendment would have gotten one more vote, the constitutional amendment would have then gone out to the states for ratification. Keep in mind, 48 states had laws banning flag burning. 48 states had laws protecting the flag against physical desecration. So it's my belief uh, that if the Senate had received that 67th vote and if this amendment had gone out to the states, my guess is it would have passed uh, a record. Uh, the quickest amendment that has ever been passed uh, in American history was passed uh, in four months. Uh, my guess is if uh, the Senate had sent this amendment out to the states for ratification, uh, it would have been passed much, much quicker than that. So uh, a very uh, interesting case, uh, a very controversial case. But here is an example of what I referred to earlier when I was talking about the court. If flag burning was up to a vote, if Americans had voted one way or the other, Americans would have voted 70 to 75 percent to ban to prohibit flag burning. Remember when I talked earlier about the philosophies of the court that the judicial activists make the claim or the argument that it is only the courts that can be a tool to protect oppressed min uh, minorities from majoritarian tyranny? Well, here's an example of that. The majority obviously opposed Mr. Johnson. The majority found his ideas offensive, disgusting. And yet the court stepped in and ruled that even though his ideas were offensive to a majority, that they were protected by the First Amendment. So here is a classic case of the Supreme Court stepping in to protect an oppressed minority and minority group from majoritarian tyranny. Now, whether the court made the right or the wrong decision here uh, is open to interpretation. I think it's fairly obvious when hearing both sides discuss their claims why this was a five to four decision. But ultimately, ultimately, uh, I, I think uh, that the Supreme Court made the right decision. Uh, that does not mean that I like flag burning. It's uh, one of the activities that will sadden me quicker than most things. Uh, when I see it occur, I, I don't become angry. I become very, very sad because uh, I do think that there are much more productive ways uh, to express displeasure with governmental policy than burning a flag. And yet, even though I find flag burning personally very disgusting, and offensive on a personal level. Uh, as someone who believes in the notion of civil liberties and being a civil libertarian myself, I'm willing to extend uh, that right and privilege to people who disagree with me. Uh, I hope that you have uh, a wonderful day. Uh, I hope you are enjoying the course uh, up to this point. Uh, you have no idea how much I, I miss you sitting at this kitchen table. Uh, instead of looking at you, I'm looking uh, at a box of uh, frosted strawberry Pop-Tarts right now. Uh, I think when this video is over, I'll have one of them, uh, but I wish that we were in class together. So uh, take care. Uh, I'll be uh, back with another video before very long. Uh, take care. Have a great day. Once again, be safe. Wash your hands, engage in social distancing. Uh, all the indications are that this thing is going to get far worse before it gets better. So I'm urging all of you uh, to please, please, please uh, be safe because uh, your health is far more important than anything that's going to occur in any of your courses this semester. Uh, so take care. Uh, good luck. Uh, and I will uh, be back on with another video very, very soon.